When you first start Poker Dealer's Toolkit, this particular dialog box will pop up. What it wants to know is what is your database group name or year. I would suggest going with the year such as 2014 and you just click right in this edit text area and your soft keyboard will pop up and you type in 2013 or 2014. You can also do a name but it's really designed for years and I'll get into that a little later in one of the videos. So you just type in whatever you particularly want to call your database group. And in this uh, particular instance we're going to call it 2000 and then we'll th uh, throw this in. Now if you take a look at the, uh, the soft keyboard at the bottom here you'll notice that it may look a little different on your particular device. The reason is each device will have a different soft keyboard the look and feel might be a little different by manufacturer if it's Samsung or some other company. So some of the dialog boxes will look different, the soft keyboard may look different and so forth, but that's fine. Uh, that's just whatever it is on your particular device. Always uh, click done or enter whatever they have it on your device, but done on the edit text uh, areas in here because that will then save it. Now this is being run on an emulator, so the first thing is it's going to be a little slower than on your device and if you take a look over here menu key and so forth when I when I bring those up these will correspond to your particular device usually on phones the menu key and these are at the bottom on tablets it could be off to the right so wherever they're at these keys will be on your particular device and I'll talk about them when I get to them so you put in a year let's say 2012 and you click create it creates a database group first thing you'll see after that is a splash screen and it comes up with a uh, error there because there's no camera and when I get to the camera area I'll show you now on an emulator here it's on my laptop and Windows so there it doesn't have a camera associated with it so when you pop up the uh, main menu you will see what you see here poker dealers toolkit is obviously the name DB is the database name I typed in 2012. All of the folders, directories, and everything that is will be used with Poker Dealer's Toolkit will be under 2012. So if you go and look at your SD card, you'll find an area that says saved, and under saved will be Poker Dealer's Toolkit, PDTK, and under that you'll have 2012. So in 2013, you can type that in for a new database, and it'll create that separately. So all the different years that you have, it'll create a series of directories and pictures and databases inside 2012. So that way you can move the data from one computer, let's say off of your cell phone, onto your laptop as a backup so you don't uh, have tons and tons and tons of stuff on it. If you take a look at this particular screen, you'll notice that the top has buttons. There's 12 buttons up here, and the bottom has this area here. The buttons, if they look like an oval chip, that means that it is enabled. So if you click on it, so let's say like this, you will go to another area. If it has a back of a card like this, a uh, rectangle, that means if you click on it, nothing will happen. It's not enabled. The next thing you'll know is that some of the text here is messed up. This is string tracker, add income, add expenses. Well, what that is about is the emulator is kind of messed up, displaying uh, buttons. So on your particular device, this will look fine. And I'll, each of the videos that I go through, I will keep mentioning that. That way, it, it'll be a reminder that it's not really like that. So remember, this is just an emulator, and it's trying to um, make things look right. Now, your particular device, it should look the same. The only thing different between devices is the bottom may be a little stretched out, and you'll have an extra area here, only because some devices are, have a longer aspect ratio, and I, I, I compensate for that so that it looks good on any of your devices. This particular bottom part is the currently selected casino. Right now, we just set it up with 2012, the casino is empty and all these are nil or zeros. When you go to settings and set everything up one time, we only got to do that one time, 
but currently selected casino will come in down here. So that way, when you run the program and you're adding income, expenses, and so forth, you'll be able to see what casino you're dealing with. If you go over here to menu and you click on menu, a menu will pop up. Again, depending on your device, this may look different. This is more of an old style uh, cell phone for the Android. The newer ones, they might look slightly different. So let's go through the menu here really quick. The top left, you click on title screen, the splash screen pops up. Now there are two versions uh, for Google and two versions for Amazon. So the G stands for Google. The free version is what we're going to uh, run with and probably what you're using right now. The free version allows you to use everything except a couple of things are locked out. And I, when we get to it, I'll explain uh, what the two areas are. But other than that, everything else is free and you can actually use it uh, no problem. And uh, a lot of the stuff you can just keep using. Uh, there are ads at the bottom, so I get a little bit off of the ads. But if you want to, you go down to get pro version down here. And with the pro version, you'll unlock a couple areas that are, uh, are limited in the free version. If you click on text instructions, the instructions pop up. That way, if you don't have access to the internet to view the videos, you can go through here and take a look at whatever. Now, depending on your device, this may look different. On a, a tablet, this which is, has a bigger screen, it may be stretched out a little more. So, um, this is just as a backup, but it does go through all the different areas uh, one by one, and you can take a look at all the different inputs and everything on it. You click on your menu key, and these are associated, like on a cell phone, the bottom left, the my the menu key, and this is the your back or your exit one uh, button that you can use. Uh, if you go down uh, through these again, you'll see a couple over here. Biff's Gaming Videos, that's uh, a website, shameless plug, with the hundreds of videos about games there. And Lojo is uh, another casino game that I designed that hopefully I'm going to get into casinos. But it's a reverse blackjack, so if you click on Pro Version or Lojo, it'll take you to the App Store. So if you downloaded this through Google, it'll take you to the Google Play App Store. If you downloaded this through Amazon, it'll take you to the Amazon App Store so that you can go to the page where either the Pro version or Lojo is and make a decision if you want to download it. Lojo is free, so you know you can download it. And of course, you can always rate these, you know, five stars and leave good comments on there. Yeah, the, the more people that download it, the more people that get the Pro version, the more likely I am to do another version and and listen I spent a lot of time working on it. it's not a big company I'm just one guy and I made this there's not that many poker dealers that would that have Androids to download it so please don't copy it you just if you like it use the pro version if not just keep using the free version but the more people that buy it the more likely I am to update it with more uh, things and I'll talk about that later but I'm gonna try to do a second version uh, with other items for poker dealers that aren't financial. This is more of a financial program. So when you're done, you click on return to main and you'll go back to the main menu. The next video uh, we'll, we'll get into settings and now settings you only have to set up once. Now when we go through settings it's going to take a long time to go through it because I'm going to go through every single piece one by one by one. All of these uh, buttons that you click on and go through, I will go through every single option, so it'll take a lot longer to explain it than actually the use. The beauty of this is you can go into String Tracker and set up all of the tables you worked as a poker dealer throughout the day, and then you go to Income, and you can save your income for the day, your tips and when you worked, and a String Tracker, or you can just save the String Tracker for the day, or you can just save the income, or you can do both. So you have the ability to quickly go in and just type in, let's say, the hours with your tips, or you can get in really detailed and go through a lot of different areas. So that's really the power of Poker Dealer's Toolkit. You can do things. You can have a, a re expense, you know, let's say a gas station, or you can take uh, pictures of it as well. So I'm gonna go through each of the areas now, one by one, and uh, show you how to work Poker Dealer's Toolkit. 
Now the second video, I'm gonna go through settings. This is gonna be actually kind of long, but you only need to do this once, and I wanted to go through all the different areas and explain to you the philosophy behind them. That way you will know quickly how to use it. Now you can use this without going through and knowing everything, but it, it's better that if you just watch this video one time to, to learn really quickly. As I say in each of the videos, uh, the text on the buttons won't look like this. This says clear all settings, go to page two and change casino. Uh, the emulator here doesn't display uh, text on buttons properly. So if you go through the different pages, and the pages are usually at the top of the screen, you can see the different areas of the settings. There's six pages here. When you go through all of them, it pops back to the main menu. So let's go back to settings. The very first thing you'll see on general settings is change casino. If you click on change casino here, you'll see seven different casinos. In the future, I may change that and have unlimited casinos, but you choose whatever casino that you want to use. Now, all of the information is on defaults or nulls or zeros or nothing So uh, because you haven't set it up yet. That's what no casino and no city means. So we're gonna, uh, we have casino one, we just click on. If you only work at one particular casino, you, you don't have to mess with it because it'll be defaulted at one. And the first time through, it'll be defaulted at one. But let's say you worked at the Rio, and uh, a month later you worked at the Pergada, and a month later you worked at the Hard Rock, you can have different casinos. And all of the settings will be saved for a particular casino. So right now we have casino one saved. You type in here the casino, the city, and the employee ID into the text boxes. You just click on this particular edit text and a soft menu pops up. And again, the soft menu is for whatever device you have. Now, I, as I'm doing these videos, it's gonna be a little difficult for me to type in information because the way this keyboard is set up. It's kind of weird, but we'll get through it. The casino, let's say we're gonna set this up for the Rio for the World Series of Poker. So you type in Rio, R-I-O, okay, so we got Rio. Always click done or enter, but done is right here. So you click done and done will then save that particular field. Now it should save it anyways, but I'm gonna keep reminding you because just in case it doesn't, it gets saved for you. The city, you can just type in whatever city it is. Now, I'm going to abbreviate a lot of things that I type in. For example, this is going to be LV, so that way it doesn't take too long. Now, if I had an actual device, it would be a lot easier and quicker. I could just type it in. Now, employee ID, if you click on that, this will allow you to type in your employee ID. And it's usually some type of number or something, but I'm going to just type in whatever just so we have something there. The reason why there's employee ID is so that if you can't remember what your ID is, you have to sign a down correction form or some type of uh, down form or whatever to get paid, you got it right there. It'd be nice and easy. And that's associated with the casino in the city. So all of your information is, is easily available. Tip sharing uh, is a, a percentage. When you get them percentages, these are uh, numbers. Now you can type in a whole number like 10 or you can do like 10.25 or whatever it is. You just click on that and you'll notice that the soft keyboard pops up and it's slightly different. This is a number keyboard and we're going to delete that a little bit and we'll top in, type in let's say 5%. What tip sharing is is there are some places that instead of the, the casino paying the dealers they take, let's say, 5% out from the dealers and give it to the brushes. The brushes, the chip run runners, do deserve to get paid, but they should be paid by the casino. Which So places that do that are, aren't the most reputable places, but they're basically taking dealers' money and giving it to the brushes. So you just put in the percentage there. I, I, I worked at one place that did that, so that's why that's here. Now, the 401k will be... 401k if uh, if you're full time. Now some places do allow you have the 401k right from the beginning, uh, from the very beginning, which most places would. Now if you leave, let's say you work at the Rio at the World Series of Poker and you did only did it for the summer for two months, you have to have a minimum amount of money, uh, at least when I worked there, to be able to keep it. So. Let's say you had a 401k deducted as 3% and the company matches another 3%. 
they might say you have to have a thousand dollars in when you leave. So if you don't make that much money, five hundred dollars or a thousand, whatever the, the number is, then they give the money back to you. But when you do that, there's actually a penalty, a ten percent penalty. So unless you're going to go over that threshold the amount that will be taken out by the time you leave the casino, it doesn't make sense to do it. Now, let's say you work for Harris for casino, the casino, casino, and they let you keep the 401k, then yeah, you can keep it in there. But anyways, this is the deducted amount, which is taken out of your paycheck pre-tax that goes into a fund uh, and 401k match is the amount that the casino then matches. And usually it goes up to 3% for the casino or whatever company and the deducted amount I believe maximum is 16 percent so if you want to take out 10 percent the company might match three percent they all have it slightly different uh, some places like every percent you put in they do a half a percent up to three percent or four percent or whatever but that's the deducted and the matched amount now the forced deducted lunch minutes is another one of those uh, things that are kind of questionable one particular place I worked at will take out 30 minutes per day per eight hour shift I should say and not pay you so you work eight hours they take out a 30 minute from your paycheck yeah I know it's crazy which is borderline uh, crazy the, the philosophy is everybody is supposed to take a lunch now as a poker dealer you know you can't control that I mean you ask for a break and six hours later they might say okay you can take a break go home kind of thing you know, I, I worked at a place once I worked 10 straight hours and I asked for a break and she said, okay, you can take a break because I finally was on a break. She goes, just go home. That's your break. You know, and so you can't really control it. So some places, well, at least one place, takes out so much per day from your hourly wages. Everybody else does it to zero. Uh, then when you're done, you can click on go to page two. Now, if you click on clear all settings, Every one of these pages will, will be zeroed out or go back to the defaulted uh, setting. So if, let's say, you wanted to start over, you just click on Clear All Settings. It just doesn't do, do this page right here. It does all, all the settings pages. You click on Page 2 and General Settings Page 2 gets set up. And uh, as you go through each of these, Cash, Tournament, Supervisor, and then the last one is Sit and Go, you can go through each of these and they all are going to be basically the same, but I will go through uh, and explain uh, this on the next video. Now, General Settings page 2 uh, is this particular page here, and I'm going to say all the videos that the buttons don't really look like that. That's an emulator issue because we're running on some emulator on a laptop on a Windows. The down start time, 0 and 30, this is when you have 30 minute downs. Now, if you have 20 minute downs, you know, that's, I can't control that. And, you know, table games sometimes do 20 or 40 minutes, but this is for really for poker dealers. We do 30 minute downs. We click on change times here, and you'll see this pop up. You see 0 and 30? Well, as you click through these, you'll notice that this changes. Let's say you worked at a place that pushes at 13 after and 43 after. Or let's say you work at 15 and 45. So you can control what the downtime starts. So this is 115 and 145 and 215 and 245. Let's say you work at a place you push the top of the hour bottom. So this is 2 o'clock and 2.30, 3 o'clock and 3.30. So later in another area, the string tracker, these will be imported and whatever time that you push at your particular casino will come in. So let's just do, I don't know, 15 and 45. Not the Rio, it's the top and the bottom of the hour for the World Series, which is the normal way of doing it. But just to show you something different, we'll do 15 and 45. That's change times and tax calculator. You click on that. And you'll see that the, the enter paycheck dollar amounts page come up. This is calculate tax right there. Now, what this is, is a general tax amount. If, if you can't do the math yourself on a calculator, you can put your gross pay. That is how much your main money you made for the week. Let's say it was $100 you made uh, on your last paycheck and it came out to let's say eighty nine dollars is what you went into the bank account gross is what you made net is after everything is deducted and taken out 
and right here when you click on tax it'll come out to 11 percent so what it's saying is you have 11 percent tax rate now when I say tax rate I mean local tax state tax federal tax social security Medicare anything that they take out the reason I don't get into it anymore is because taxes change from paycheck to paycheck if you file single that'll be different rate than if you file married and you can file married jointly and married separately and there are different rates and depending on how much money you make for the week you might be in a different tax bracket so let's say one week you made a hundred bucks and the next week you made ten thousand let's say you had a really good week some guy came bill gates came in and gave you ten grand so you make ten grand, grand that week well your tax rate goes way up the reason is they assume that's how much you're gonna make every single week and so they take out a certain percentage so it fluctuates so what we want to do is look at your paychecks and try to figure out about what gets taken out of your taxes now with taxes there, there's several different areas and I'll go through these so you can look at your pay stub and fi uh, find out what these things are the Fed WH is federal withholding this is the amount that gets taken out for the federal government and we pay taxes because you know we're uh, you know the little guy but with the poker dealers toolkit you'll be able to deduct a lot of your exp your expenses and get back if not all of it then almost all of it you'll be able to get back that you you put in because your expenses are so high you have you know if, if you're going from casino to casino you have car expenses you know driving you got hotels you got food all, everything that related to the industry you can deduct so you might see fed wh you might see federal withholding or something without something different but those are the two main ones now fed oasdiee -E, is your federal old age survivors disability insurance also known as social security so depending on what casino you work at it will be one of those usually now it was at 6.2 percent and they dropped it down to 4.2 percent so they can rack up more money with a deficit eventually it's going to go back up to 6.2 percent if it hasn't already gone up that high already which is the money that will then be collected and put into your social security so when you retire you can get the money back uh, I read an article saying that uh, they actually collect more money in Social Security than what you get back on an average lifespan, which is kind of interesting. However, the Fed Med EE is Federal Medical Insurance, which is Medicare. They take 1.45%, although they, uh, the same article said that they take a lot less in Medicare than they actually uh, give back. So you actually use uh, more money in Medicare than than what you're putting in but anyways uh so it'll be either federal federal medical insurance it'll say medicare or fed med ee so uh depending on your pay stub and casino you work at these will be slightly different so you can take a look at the percentages and uh so i didn't want to give a particular percentage for tax rate i just kind of threw it all in so we're going to go with 11 percent tax rate and we're going to click on return to settings or or return to this particular screen right here email is your email address so you just type it in and it'll come up and, uh, and give you information they'll say yes or no that's a valid email address it doesn't actually check to see if that's your email address it just looks at the format so that way I'm not using it for spam or anything I, I don't care about any of that kind of stuff this is really for you now this will be used later to be able to send information to yourself you can send databases to yourself so if let's say you had a bunch of information you type in over a six month period if you get your cell phone stolen then your your SOL but if you can email stuff to yourself then you can have backups tax rate as we showed earlier is the percentage so it actually imports that to right there what we just did so 1545 got imported 11 percent and then your email here this will be sent somewhere else so all these things will be sent to other areas of poker dealers toolkit casino hourly rate payment frequency this is the hourly rate let's say seven dollars an hour eight dollars an hour or ten dollars an hour that you get paid now if you're at a Indian casino they might pay you 311 an hour if you're in the state of Florida, they may pay you 465 an hour. They usually pay you the tips percentage unless you work at a, a 
a place that has competition, let's say in Las Vegas, then they'll pay you a lot more. Or a place that might be run by the government, you know, they might pay you a little more than what you really should be paid. But this is the hourly pay rate. So if you're getting eight twenty five an hour and you get paid weekly, you click on weekly. Uh, if you get paid daily, which is highly unlikely, you click on daily or every two weeks. Rio pays the hourly rate every two weeks. Now, the last day of pay week is what it, what it sounds like. Some places it's Sunday, some places it's Friday. The Rio, I believe, does Thursday, and then they pay you the following Friday. Some places it's Sunday, and then they pay you Friday. So we'll go with Thursday here on the radio buttons. Now, if you go to page three, you'll notice that this is cash game settings, cash tips payment frequency. Well, each of these areas tournament tips and so forth will have a different frequency for payment. What that means is cash tips payment might be daily, which daily means it goes right in your pocket. So in Las Vegas, you can put the tips right in your pocket and you can keep it. By the way, you don't put it into your pocket. You put it into a pouch or a box. And then after you get up from the table, you put it in, into uh, your pocket later. But you never do it at the table. I've seen people do that. This just doesn't look classy when you tip some guy and he puts it into his pocket. So weekly is for, let's say, in a place that has a tip box. You put it into the, the, the locked tip box. I should say not just a tip box, a locked tip box. And at the end of the day, you take the box up to a cage. You fill out a form and then they pay you next week. So each day they don't allow you to take it. That's usually places where they might have uh, tipping for the brushes where they take out a certain percentage. Every two weeks, let's say a place doesn't pay you every week, they won't pay you every two weeks. Let's say at the, the Rio, it's weekly. Um, or actually, it, it's daily at the at the, at the Rio. They let you keep the money. If you go to the next screen, tournament settings, this is the exact same thing. Now, at the Rio, they pay you tournament tips weekly. They pay uh, cash tips, goes right into your pocket, and you can keep it. And then your hourly rate is every two weeks. So you can set this up where it's different. Now, some places just do weekly for everything. Weekly hourly rate, weekly cash, weekly tournament. So depending on whatever casino it is, you just put in how often you get paid. Now, on cash settings, you click in there, the edit text box. and you So in cash game settings, you, you just type uh, in the amount that your cash hourly rate is. Now, some places, let's say it pays you, let's say $7 an hour. I think of the Rio, they pay you $7.25 and then $8.25 for tournament or whatever. It's actually different. But this particular setting is how much you get for your hourly cash game rate. You go to page four and tournament, it might actually pay different, your multi-table tournaments. Whenever we say tournament in this particular program, it's multi-table. Sit and go is a single table. So you can actually have different rates for your different areas. Let's say uh, supervisor, let's say you're at a place that you also supervise. Well, maybe they, uh, you, you supervise once a week and it pops up to $12 an hour. Now you can also type in 1225 or whatever. I'm just doing the, the, the shorthand here at $12 an hour because it's easier and faster. So if it's the same, let's say $8 an hour for all of them, you just put down $8 an hour for each of them. But this gives you the ability to have different rates for different positions, and the World Series of Poker, they do between cash and tournament. The supervisor settings is the same as you saw before. Um, they do allow tips for some places, which is a bad idea, because usually when a place that allows the supervisor to keep his tips, they make bad rulings uh, against what the dealers are supposed to be doing, and there's nothing you can do about it. You make, you make, you know, it, it's not a good idea, but some places do allow supervisors to get tips. Uh, my advice is you get, if supervisors get tips, they should put it in a pool, like in a big jar, and they uh, should uh, then split it up later. But anyways, uh, some uh, allow them to just keep their tips daily, and I've seen supervisors making more money than me. You know, they tip me $10 for a sit-and-go tournament, and the supervisor gets 40 and it's like, What? I just dealt for three hours, and the supervisor didn't do anything. Uh, anyways, uh, so that is a supervisor settings. Uh, this is also for dual rate. If you uh, are a dealer and you dual rate, what that basically is, is the casino doesn't want to pay someone full-time benefits, so they're going to make you do a supervisor uh, 
one day and someone else the next day and someone else the next day. So they go through two or three months with all their dealers as a supervisor so they don't have to pay more money. By the way, you make half the amount of money as a supervisor than you would as a, as a dealer. So really, you don't want to do that. But some places make you do that um, because they don't want to pay the, some, one, one person full time. Um, go to page six and you'll see single table set and go. This is the hourly rate right here. So we'll click delete and we'll go back and we'll say, I don't know, $8 an hour. And always click done or enter, whatever they have. Usually it's done. And so you that's how much your hourly rate is. Now, if you get $8 an hour for everything, you put down $8 an hour. Now, the dollar amount here for the small, mid, and high stakes, what this is about is a place like the Rio in Las Vegas will give you a bonus depending on what sit-and-go game that you deal and it has to do with the amount of money that they are collecting for example if the small stakes is let's say two hundred dollars or less they may give you a five dollar bonus if it's from two hundred dollars to five hundred dollars they may give you fifteen dollar bonus and if it's let's say it's from five hundred or higher they might give you a twenty five dollar bonus the reason is when you go to the higher stakes the Blind levels are longer. It might be 15 minutes here and 20 or 30 minutes down here. And this might have a 1,000 or 1,500 in chips, and this might be 5,000 or 10,000 in chips. So it takes longer to do the high-stake stuff because people are paying more money and they want more value. Because of that, the house actually makes more money off of the higher-stake stuff. The dealer then is compensated let's say $5 for a small stakes, 15 or 25. So a small stakes, you might be able to deal on an hour and a half, but it might take three hours to deal high stakes, so they actually give you more money. So you might be able to get four of the small stakes in a day or two of the high stakes. So they compensate you. And the reason why it's 5, 15, 25, not 25, uh, 15, 5, is because they make more money. You think you would get more in the small stakes, but no, because they actually are pulling more of money. The same percentage or juice, but they get more money so they can compensate you just a little bit more here. If you're at a place that they don't do that, to put zeros in here, if you only have one particular amount, let's say $5, you put five, five and five if you want. So this supports up to three different amounts that you, a bonus for a sit and go single table. And the payment frequency, usually this is daily. The reason is um, sit and goes are usually basically cash games, so you get tipped a hundred bucks. It's daily. Daily means it goes right in your pocket. Whereas the small stakes, mid and high stakes, these will be on uh, usually your tournament uh, payment uh, frequency, which is usually right here. Sometimes it will be your hourly bonus, which is uh, right here every two weeks. That is just a bonus that the, the house pops in. It, it might just come up uh, every two weeks if it, they do it every two weeks. But uh, as far as the tips go, it's daily. And uh, then when you click on return to main, you go back to the main menu. Now, I know the settings area was quite long, but now that you understand the settings, all the other areas will go a lot, lot, lot faster. And you'll notice that the, the Casino Rio, Las Vegas, and then the employee ID number, and all these things were just imported uh, from the casino, which was casino one that you had selected. So anytime you run Poker Dealer's Toolkit, you'll come up to this main menu and you just uh, go to whatever area you want really quickly. The settings only is done one time to set up the casino, and that's it. And it's kind of overkill, but... A lot of the stuff gets saved off so that later on you'll be able to like view it and know, oh, okay, that's what was going on. So you'll be able to see it immediately and, and, you know, and uh, let's say you, you don't remember what your employee ID number is. Well, it's right there. You just, you just hit your cell phone button really quickly and you get your employee ID number. And by the way, you don't pull out your, your cell phone at the table. <laughs> you get in trouble for that. Uh, four way, uh, one four one k deducted and matched top bottom the hour and so forth. It's all here. So that is your settings area. And now I'll go through each of the areas really quickly and show you how to uh, 
have income, string tracker, expenses, and the other different areas. Uh, this is setting, this is calculator, this is DB utilities, event and transaction ID, camera, convert and email, string tracker, string tracker database, add income, income database, add expenses, expenses database. So after you set up ex expenses, uh, if you have receipts, you'll do income if you have any type of income for the day. String tracker will be the um, 24 hours of where you work throughout the day. You can use the camera to take picture of your expenses or your income or pay stubs or a schedule. Uh, it might be on the wall. Convert an email will allow you to email things out to yourself. Database utilities will allow you to change the, the database group. Calculator probably will change to something else. Right now, if you run a calculator, it, it, it closes Poker Dealer's Toolkit and runs a calculator, but eventually I will change to something else, uh, maybe some type of stats or mileage for car or something along those lines will, will go into here. Event and transaction ID will allow you to set up, let's say WSOP is an event, and then have transaction ID one, then two, then three. So that way, when you do expenses, you'll have a unique transaction event ID combo for expenses so that you can put them on the receipts. So now I've uh, babbled along for a long time. Let's go through each of the areas really quickly and show you how it's, it's done. Let's start off with String Tracker. This is String Tracker database. If you click on the databases, you'll notice that, uh, well, first of all, the, the text is kind of messed up, but that's the emulator issue. Uh, on your actual device, it won't look like that. You'll actually see it. So you'll notice that all 24 hours of the day is represented in half hour increments. We're assuming that you have half hour downs. If you have a 20 or 40 minute downs, then you know, uh, you're know you gonna have to adjust it yourself, but these are 30 minute downs. If you click on return here, you'll come back out. The same goes for income database, there's nothing there. And also for expenses database, there's nothing here. The reason it, when you click on these and also convert an email, you'll see that uh, these are all not enabled is because you haven't recorded any records yet. So when you start recording records, those will pop up. Before you do the records, the first thing you really want to do is go to string tracker right there. You'll notice that clear page is up here. If you click on clear page, it clears everything out and just X's everything uh, for the page. And you can go through the four 24 hours. This is noon, 6 p.m., and then uh, return the main. So you've got four different pages there. If you go in here to the first page, this is midnight, you will notice that 12.15, 12.45, it's not midnight and 12.30, it's 12.15, 12.45. The reason is in settings, you set up 15 and 45 in the settings area. So it just imported it right into here. So this particular casino, the Rio, actually does it at the top and bottom hour, but let's say they, they change it to 15 and 45. It comes right into here. Any other times that you want to include into the database, you just click on this side here. If it's not highlighted with a check or whatever uh, it looks like on your particular device, and these look slightly different on different devices, these will be included. The ones that are not highlighted will not be included. So 115 to 245, these four will be included. Column two, if you click on it, the edit text pops up. You will be able to type in whatever you want for a table number. Let's say this was table number two. Always click done when you're done. And this will go down to the next one. And let's say the next one was table Table three, and by the way, your soft keyboard should be able to pop up and not look like this. This is kind of tough to do this like this way. And let's say we uh, didn't do anything there, we were in a break, and then we go to table, I don't know, nine. So we did two, three, break, and then nine. And we'll click on done to uh, select it. These over here stand for cash game, tournament, single table set and go, the one, and X means you're on a break. So let's say we did cash game, cash game, break, tournament. These are the four that'll be included. If I don't 
include it there, this one will not be included in the database uh, string tracker, only the ones that are highlighted. So that's what we did for today. We had a nice quick two hour day. So you click on the rest of the 24 hours and then you come back out to the main menu. Now, one thing you're going to notice is not only do the, uh, the casinos stay here when you turn off the computer and turn it back on, but if you go to string tracker again, the information is there. That way, it's like, oh, I worked an extra hour, I stayed another hour. You can type in the information for the next hour. And let's say you did a single table to sit and go and you don't even know what the table was. So you did that for another couple of hours right there. You know, that's, that's what these are for. So now that we've got the string tracker database, which you can modify throughout the day, you can come back to it. Now you've got a string tracker database right here. You'll notice that there's still zero is zero. The reason is you haven't recorded it yet. The way to record it is inside the add income right here. When you click on add income, you'll see a, a, a page pop up. You'll notice that there's numbers here. These numbers are the ones that were imported from your string tracker database. You told it you did two downs for cash games. You said you did one down for tournament. You did two hours for sit and go. You had one, uh, uh, one down for a free time. So the stuff gets imported right directly into here. So you have different areas that you can put information in. Uh, if you click on clear page, it'll clear everything out. So if you don't want to use a string tracker, if you just want to come type in your times, which is up here, and your amount for cash games, let's say you work four hours and you made $100 in tips, you put $100 right here, in and out, and that's it. You don't have to use a string tracker. And you can also modify it. Let's say the number of downs for the cash games was three. You can change that. All you got to do is just click inside the edit text box. And let's say you made $144 as a dealer, um, let's say you supervised and you made $2 and, and these numbers aren't necessarily checking to see that it's correct. So it's um, just looking at the numbers that you typed in so you can put it whatever you want. Um, the dealer tournament downs uh, is a dollar per down. Let's say it was $11 a down, you know, it's a really low day. When you type this information in, you may not necessarily know what the dollar per down for the tournament is, so you might go back in a database later and change it, and I'll show you how to do that when we get to the, the databases. But for now, you can either leave that zero, or you can put an amount in like 11 or 15 or whatever they normally come out around to be, and then you can modify it later. Now, the second column is the number of hours. So you're assuming that each down is 30 minutes, so you have two downs equals one hour. Right, so you cast games, tournament, free times, your off time, and supervisor. Now, sit and go tournaments is a single table sit and goes. Now, I said we did two hours there, and you click on the dollar sign, and let's say you made I don't know twenty two hundred ninety nine dollars. Uh, so you had a really good sit and go cast game. So that is the amount of money the cast that they tipped you. The number small, mid, and high. All that is, is the number that you dealt. It's not how much you made. So I did one high cash game. You remember out when we did the five, 15, and 25 bonus? This is gonna say, I'm gonna get a $25 bonus for this from the casino. So now that we've got uh, all these done, uh, we'll make sure we have to do the uh, in and out times. So this is March 31st at 12 a.m. Let's just say we left at Oh, 3 a.m. Now it doesn't check to make sure that the, the hours that you put in these boxes match up here. So you can put in whatever you want. I'm just putting in whatever crazy amount here. So when you're done, you, you can click on calculate and this particular screen pops up. And as you notice, the, the bonus here is $25. It's a sit and go bonus. So they're set up in different sections and that comes down to the uh, column right here. So your hourly pay was $30.50 and you had four downs, four hours, which by the way, it doesn't add up properly, and you made $481 in tips. Now from there, it will uh, come up with an amount, and if you have 5% tip sharing, which you set up earlier, it will deduct that money at 5% out first, which is $22.80, which is 5% of your total amount. Then it will take out 3% for your 401k because it was set up as 3%. 
Then it will take out your taxes. Now, by the way, the tip sharing has to be taken out before your money because it, you can't tax their money. It's, it's the brush's money, so you can't tax it and get double taxed. Then the 401k money comes out and the taxes, which is your local, your state, your federal, all that, 11%. And it gives you an estimated net pay, which is $421.90. The reason why it's estimated is because we don't really know what the taxes are. The rest of the stuff you typed in, you know, so it's going to be pretty close. It might be a dollar or two off. This is what I really care about. This is the money that goes into my bank account. Now, if for whatever reason the taxes are slightly different, you can go back in the database later when you get your paycheck and you modify it. In and out times right here is the times you typed in in and out was three hours. If you go to save, you'll come up with a database with all the information that you're going to save. Don't save all right up here and save income record. If you click on save, it saves it. Then the string tracker pops up after that. And you'll notice over here you've got the string tracker ones that we told it to save. And don't save is here and save is here. You click on save, it saves it. And then you can go out to the main menu from there. And from now on, you'll be able to modify and, and look at the uh, database records that you just did. So if you click on Add Income, what you can do is you can hit, click on Clear Page. And let's say you just worked two hours and you made, I don't know, you did... Um, uh, you did a cash game, you had $126, had really good two hours. And that's all you want to do, that's all you got to do is click on Calculate, go to Save, Save Income. Now let's say you don't want to do the String Tracker because that's stuff that's still in there from yesterday. You click on Don't Save. So that is the quick and easy way to add income without all that other stuff, particularly from the String Tracker. So what you can do now is you can go to the databases, for example, the String Tracker database, and it'll be a lot faster on your device. This is actually on a slow emulator. And you'll see the times come up that you put in there. The, the four that we put in is cash, cash, free, and term. It was these four right here that we have. So this is a representation of all 24 hours. So only the ones you have. Now we had, um, have extra information here because we hit reset and the first time you hit reset it'll actually pop up uh, some of the extra ones but you'll it'll make more sense once you do this but it'll, it'll these are the four that we saved right there now this says list delete return first previous next and last now all of these databases will kind of look the same uh, have most of the same buttons so it'll, it'll be very familiar once you do it once or twice one of one means this is the first record and there's a total of one records in this particular database. Now, if you click on return and go to income, you'll notice that there's two here because we had two uh, records. If you click on next, you'll come up with two or two, with the second record. So at the top here, will allow you to go through the database of whatever it is. So if you click on string tracker again, we'll go back into the string tracker database. And We'll take a look at this. Now, it, now these are set up by hours. So the one o'clock hour, if you click on where it says cash, the, the input that you typed in, it will come up with a way to change it. This is the 115 down and this is the 145. So you actually have two downs at a time. And it's a lot easier to do two downs at a time because 24 of these um, throughout here on a, on a cell phone is kind of small. So I did it by hours. So you can do two at a time. Let's say you click on uh, the 245, you do 215 and 245. And let's say at 215, I had off. No, actually, I did a cash game, and you click in there, and I was on table, whatever it is. You can type in letters or numbers. It was table K for whatever reason, because it was over by a kiosk somewhere. They call it table K. So you can change any of these for the, both uh, the downs. Now, when you click on change, it'll save all the information, the time, the table, and what you did for both a 215 and a 245. And you'll notice right there, it just popped up and it changed it and right there. So you can go through and add these. So if one, one of these areas over here, if you click on one of these areas, 
it'll pop up and then you can change the information for that particular area if you had if uh, information over there so that is the string tracker database and I'll, I'll talk about the top uh, on, on the income area so you can go in and change the, the times and the dates and the tables and everything so that way you always know what you worked the reason why you want to keep track of what you did is let's say you did four downs right here and the, and the casino says oh you only did three well no you can go back to March 31st at midnight to 3 a.m. and you can look at where you at? oh they forgot to give me the K down because that was over at the kiosk area or whatever I don't know <laughs> but you but every place you work at will, uh, will short you every now and then so you might lose 15 or 20 dollars which then pays for the pro version by the way if you want to upgrade now add income income database you click on income database everything you typed in an in income database pops up now this has two records so if you click on first it'll go to the first record one click on last it'll go to the last record you'll notice this information slightly changes this is previous and next right here this is a left arrow and right arrow if you click on list what will happen is a list will pop up this particular dialog box will be different depending on whatever database this one is set up for March 31st 2013 it's $103.34. This is how much you made that particular day. And I guess I came back and, and, and worked a second shift that same day and made $421 because it's the same date. But no, you know what? I actually messed up and it wasn't supposed to be $331. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that, which is record two, and I'm going to change when I worked. The second column here is just like the uh, string tracker database. You would click on it and it pops up. So we actually uh, worked April 1st, and the date out is April 1st. So now when you go up and click on list, it will list it by year uh, after the month and the day. So that on this particular database, what matters is is the date first and you also want to see this right here so you can go and change any of these that you want uh, we went to record one let's say you did cash tips cash tips pops up and you can change the cash tips each of these will look slightly different the dialog boxes depending on what it is this one here is cash hour so one hour and 1.25 would be an hour and, and tw um, 15 minutes. By the way, if, if you're at a place that rounds the 15 minutes, just put it round, round everything the 15 minutes up here um, for 12. Don't do like 12.03 or 12.08. Just round it to 12.15. Uh, if you're at a place that actually does it by the minute, then you do it by the minute. So that way you actually get a real amount. And one thing you'll notice is if you change in the amounts, it does not calculate and recalculate. The net pay will be the same in taxes. So let's say you go and you realize the taxes was actually more for the week. It doesn't recalculate it. If you want to recalculate it, go create a new record through the income area. That way you can modify whatever you want here and not have to go through all that changes. Uh, if you click on delete, it'll delete the current record. And if you add new records, what you'll notice is you go to list it lists things either alphabetically on other uh, databases, but this one I'll do it by year. So if you, uh, if I changed, let's say I changed the one for um, April 1st here, and it was actually March 1st, you'll notice that it'll go to record one, because when you go to list, it goes by date. So that way you have an easy way of figuring out when you worked by date so that is the income uh, database so you save the information as a string tracker throughout the day then you go to income and you save your income and your string tracker then you then it puts it into the databases one thing you'll notice if you go convert an email is that now these two you can now uh, mess with and modify and I'll, I'll get into this area uh, in a future video, but as uh, you do the databases, we haven't done an expense database yet, so this is not uh, enabled. 
But these two we have. We have one record and string tracker and two an income database. So you can uh, you have to wait until you actually put a record into the database. Now this next area, add expenses and expenses database. And by the way, it's the emulator that I'm running this on uh, on my Windows laptop. It doesn't display this uh, right on buttons for some reason. If I can figure that out, I'll make a new video. But I'll keep uh, as a disclaimer in case you didn't watch the previous videos. So we'll go on add expenses. Add expenses allows you to save expenses and go through and save expenses. Now you can also take pictures and bring them in here. So what I'm going to show is the camera before I do the expenses because I want to show you the expenses might be a, a receipt for gas that you can bring a camera a picture in. So let's go ahead and do the camera really quick. Now this is shooting a really white wall. Now actually it's the emulator. It doesn't have a camera as, uh, associated with it therefore it shows blank. But if you um, have a, a camera on your device it'll show the camera right here. These top ones right here, front, back, flash, effect, size, you can press multiple times and it'll go between front and back camera. Flash will go between off, on, auto. Effects has normal and sepia and negative. The size will allow you to change the size of the file. Which basically is the resolution of the picture. Now I've already got it set up. I think it's like about 1.4 meg per picture. So it, it's actually um, highly compressed already and it shows a very high quality. The effects, if you take a picture of a receipt, sometimes it might fade if it's particularly if it's in the sun. You can click on effects and you go into like a, a negative mode or a sepia and you might be able to get the lines of the, uh, the information that was recorded. So I, I threw that in there so that, you know, if you needed it, you can use it. Flash, let's say you're in a dark area, you can always put on flash. Front and back, might not be used on all devices. I have a front and back on my cell phone, but my tablet only has a front. Now, if you're going to go between front and back, you always want to do back. The reason is the front cameras are much lower pixels, let's say 2 megapixels or 1 megapixel. The back might be 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever it is. The reason is the front is for teleconferencing, so two people can talk to one another with low data input being going back and forth. The back camera, which is pointing away from the person, that is meant to take pictures of things. So it's much, much higher resolution. And that's really what you want. You don't want to, you can change the size here if you had to, but you really want the back so you can see whatever you're shooting. If you do it in the front, it might come out all fuzzy and weird and stuff. File path and file name will pop up after you click one of these four buttons down here. These are the four buttons used to take a camera picture. File path will start off with something like uh, MN, MT, and, and some other things first, and then it'll give you the file path, which will be like PDTK slash, um, it'll have save, PDTK, and the, let's say whatever um, your database group is, which is 2012. And I wish I could show you this with the emulator by camp. It'll pop up and you'll see the actual file path on your SD card. The file name will then come under the second line. The file name for uh, PayStub will start with P-A-Y underscore. If it's a scheduled picture, it'll start with S-C-H underscore. If it's an income, it'll start with I-N-C underscore. If it's unassociated expense picture, it'll also have uh, three characters and an underscore. The reason is that way you'll know what the different things you're, you're, you're recording. This will make more sense in a second. So let's take a look at PayStub. If you click on PayStub, it will take a picture of whatever it is here, which is your PayStub. So you take a picture of PayStub and it will put it into the PayStub folder. And I'll start with P-A-Y underscore. That way you can take pictures of all your PayStubs throughout the year and you can have them all. If you don't know what you're making or you lose it or whatever, you can go back and take a look to make sure that you're making the right amount of money. Schedule is something I threw in there because sometimes I forget when I was supposed to work. I put it into the, um, the camera or the, the, the phone's uh, calendar section and I'm like, well, I accidentally deleted it. Well, what is it? Well, what they do is they post schedules on the wall. You just take a picture of it and so you always have it. 
you know, <laughs> it's just a neat little thing. Now, each of these are in different folders, so they won't get mixed up on your SD card under your database group. Income picture is, let's say you have a, a place that has tips that go into a locked tip box. And then at the end of the night, you take that and you turn it into the cage and they give you a receipt. Let's say you made 220 bucks. Well, you just take a picture of your, your income receipt. That way, at the time when you get paid, you can go back and verify how much you're supposed to get paid, which your pay stub, and how much you made on income uh, for cash games. And you can start trying to calculate if they uh, gave you the right amount or not. And believe me, they do make mistakes a lot. They, they do. You think they wouldn't, but they actually do make mistakes. So it's good to have this information readily available. And the income pictures... Well, see, when I do, I do the income pictures, uh, I use it and keep it on my cell phone. But when I don't do it, before I wrote this program, I'd have these, these receipts all around. They would, I would have folders back at the motel. Some would be in my car. Some would be in my wallet. And you can, it's just like two minutes. I'd lose them. I'd throw them out. So if you have this stuff all together on one folder on your SD card, and this is on a different folder, and this is on a different folder, it makes things a lot, a lot easier. Now, the unassociated expense picture, what that is, is the, if you're going to do a picture of a receipt for, let's say, you went to a gas station, you spent 50 bucks at BP, so you went to British Petroleum or, or Wawa or wherever, you take a picture of the receipt so you can deduct it off your taxes. Now, when you take a picture, it's not associated to a record. And I'll show that when I go to the expense record next. But what you do is you'll associate whatever picture you take with a record so that it has a link to your picture, which is kind of neat. Once it gets linked, it'll become associated. And I'll show you the past and everything in a little bit. So basically what this is, is it, you're saying it's, it's, it's going to be an expense record, you know, a motel receipt or whatever. And it puts it into the unassociated expense folder, which separates it from everything else. And there's a separate folder for the expense, unassociated and for associated. And you'll see that in a little bit. When you're done, you click on return, and you pop back out here. After you, let's say you click on camera, and you take a picture of your BP uh, gas, you uh, use an unassociated, and you come back out here to return, then you go into expenses, and you can create an expense record and associate that particular picture with this particular expense that we're going to do next. Okay, so... You went to the camera, you, you went to BP, you took a picture of the receipt. And by the way, if you don't have the receipt, just take a picture of the actual pump. Let's say it was 30 bucks at the pump and it didn't pop out a receipt. Just take a picture of the receipt of the pump, you know, uh, the little LCD uh, readout. So you take a, and click on unassociated expense. So now you have a picture. And I wish I could show you the picture, but the emulator doesn't support the camera. Then you click on add expenses. And by the way, each of these won't look like that. These buttons are a property of the emulator not displaying the buttons properly. This is go to expense. This is expense date, transaction ID, receipt amount, company name, location, city, list, delete, add. So that's what those say. The first thing you're going to know is um, you're going to see is a no EID and transaction zero. If you go to expenses and you go to don't save, you can go up to event and transaction ID and you can set that right here, uh, which I'll show you in a little bit. For now, we're just going to go with the default, which is no event ID. If you click on expense date, it'll pop up with whatever date it is. So you can say, oh, it was, you know, yesterday and it'll change the day. Uh, event ID, there's no event ID. You can, it'll be w, WSOP, WPT, whatever. Transaction ID, let's say it's the first one that I did. You don't want to do zero. You want to do one. The, the event ID, transaction ID combo will, is unique. So there can never be a no EID1 or no EID2. You can only do it once. And I'll, I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll explain that. And the next thing I'll do, I'll show how to set that up. But for now, let's just do expenses. The receipt amount, oh, I don't know. It was 50 bucks. 
the company name, oh, we went to, uh, I don't know, it was British Petroleum, BP. Always click done when you're done so that it selects it now. It could be enter or whatever. I think it's done on most, most phones. Uh, location, oh, um, I don't know, the receipt was somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'll just say LV for Las Vegas to make it nice and easy. Click done and change. So as you see, this is what the receipt would have. Now down here is category. What is the category? Well, this is going to be whatever you want it to be. So we click on add and let's say we want this to be called fuel or gas or whatever. I'm just going to call it gas. Nice, nice and simple. G A S and you click done add and you'll see it pop up right here. So in this particular database, there's one record, a total of one, which is gas. Okay, let's say you wanted to uh, have a second one, I don't know, um, that's something simple, let's say hair, let's say uh, for haircuts, H-A-I-R-R, -R. did you hear about the uh, new, uh, did you hear about the uh, new pirate movie, it's rated R, yeah, yeah, my nephews think that's funny, anyways, so we have two records two total records if you click on list it'll show you a list of all of the different um, things that you uh, put in this particular database which is the category database so we're clicking on gas there's no forward or next or whatever on this particular area. It's just list delete and add if you don't want to have gas you know just click on delete or go get some Beano or something but I'm bump Okay, so now we have gas, and let's say, do you have a receipt? Yes, I have a receipt. No, I lost it. I lost it. Okay, whatever. You can still put it in there. It is an expense. All right. So when you go to go to expense, you go to page two. You'll notice that this right here is the information that is going to be saved to database. Is the stuff that you typed in. If you don't want to save this, you click on don't save. If you want to save it, you click on save. This down here allows you to associate a picture. Remember the last video we uh, went and uh, faked uh, taking a picture of the, uh, the receipt for the, uh, the gas? Well, that's what you bring in here. You click on Associate Picture and Rename right here, and what will pop up right here, now the emulator doesn't show it because we don't have a camera supported, but it will pop up in this particular area, and you just click on the one that you want, and you click Associate. Then what will happen is the picture will come in the thumbnail right here. So that will then be associated to this particular record. So this particular record, no EID transaction one, would have whatever picture it is. When you don't see anything Poker Dealer's Toolkit like this, this is the default. What that is, is just a dummy picture saying, hey, there's no picture here. Now, if you click on the picture, you can then rotate it and take a look at it larger if you want. You click on X to get back out. When you click on associate picture right here, you'll notice that these two buttons flop. This becomes not enabled and that becomes enabled. So if you have a picture associated, you can click on associate nothing. If let's say you click on the wrong picture. Okay, it wasn't the, actually the gas. I had a motel. I want the gas. So you can click on associate nothing and it will associate nothing. When you associate a picture, the first thing it does is renames it to the event ID and transaction ID and it moves it from the unassociated picture folder to the associated picture folder. When you take the picture using Poker Dealer's Toolkit, it puts it into the unassociated picture folder. So you come in here and you click on this and this is the unassociated picture folder and a list of all the pictures will pop up. Then when you rename it, it renames it and moves it over to the associated picture folder. So there's two different areas for it. Now I'm going to click on this and show you what happens if you click on the little uh, uh, dots here. This is the different areas into the um, uh, Poker Dealer's uh, Toolkit. Now if you take a picture from a different area, it's not going to work. It has to come from the unassociated picture area, which by the way, if you go out and take a look, it'll be under Saved, Poker Dealer's Toolkit, then uh, it'll be whatever year you're doing right now or whatever database you're doing, which is 2012. So every time you do a, a new database group, it'll create a database group there. So it's 2012. And then these are the actual uh, folders that it creates into the section. 
The databases section has the databases like income, expenses, string tracker. That'll all be in there. The um, picture folders, picture expense associated and unassociated. Well, when you take a picture, it'll put it in the unassociated. And then when you associate it here, it'll move into the associated picture uh, folder. The income, pick income, pick pay stubs, pick schedules are also for pictures. So in your picture area, when you took a picture of income, it goes into this folder. You took a picture of pay stubs here and picture schedules here. So it separates the pictures by different folders. The important thing to remember right here is when you have a picture and you associate it, it'll move into the associated pictures folder. And then when you unassociate it, it'll move it back into the unassociated. And that's really where you want to be. So if you take a picture of something with your camera outside of Poker Dealer's Toolkit, you have to put it into the um, unassociated picture folder where, right here. If it's in this particular folder, that's where you can import it in, uh, if that makes any sense. And I'll go back over this on, a, on a, another video explaining the uh, actual file path. But for now, it, it's, it's basically set up that way. If for whatever reason these mess up, you can you can hold this button down uh, right here. It's not a button. Well, you press on this black area and hold it down for a second. Both of these will become enabled, so you can do whatever you want if for whatever reason. So if you don't want to save this, you click Don't Save. If you want to save, you click Save. So let's click on Save. You come up to Expenses Database, and you'll notice that it's now here. Now, Expenses Database, the bottom part is exactly the same before. You can click on this picture, rotate it. You know, uh, you can associate the picture. Right now, there's no picture associated. So, let's say you, you, now you took a picture and you want to associate it. You can associate it or unassociate it with the same as before. The top is the same as before on the other databases. List, delete, return, first, previous, next, last. You click on List. It'll list all the expense records. Now, this particular one does it by month and day. Transaction ID is one, and event ID, which is uh, different on different databases because it looks slightly different because of what you want it to do. Uh, if you click on these right here, you can change them just like the other ones. So each of these is uh, changeable. And if you click on this one right here, it'll list all the event transaction IDs so that you just get a list of them in case you wanted to know what was there. And you just click on return to go back to the main menu. And that is the expenses area. So now that you know how to set up a string tracker, add income and expenses and take pictures, let's go to the event and transaction ID and DB utilities and show you other areas that really you, you would do first. First thing is um, uh, you, you would set up the database group, which is 2012, and then you go to settings, and then most probably you would go to event and transaction ID. And you set those up first so you have a, a reference to everything, and then as you put records in, it goes into this area. It'll make a lot more sense later when we go through this. Let's go to DB Utilities here. What this is, is an area that allows you to change the database group. Now these buttons won't look like that. That's a, a issue with the emulator not displaying properly on the computer here. I have a laptop. This is Add Import Database Group List Remove Not Delete. This is the current database group. So we go out here, it's 2012, which is the database group. So I'm doing last year. It's actually March of 2013, but I'm for whatever reason I'm doing 2012 right now. If you click on Add Import and then type in a new database year, let's say 2013, and using this particular uh, soft keyboard takes forever because you have to punch everything multiple times. Now, depending on whatever device you have and the manufacturer device the soft keyboard probably is a lot better. But for whatever it's worth, this is what I'm using and it's a little slower. So 2013, always click done when you're done so it selects it and click create. Now you'll see 2013 there. You hit return and 2013 is a current selected database group. If you go back to the DB Utilities, you'll um, see that right here. If you click on list, you'll see a list of all the database groups that are on your SD card. Each group has a series of databases, such as income database, such as uh, the expense database, the expense category like hair or whatever, or gas, um, income, all the different databases 
for 2012 or under that 2012. 2013 has a series of its own databases as well. So this allows you to have different years. So let's say now we're in 2013, I can take out all the information from 2012 right off my SD card and put it on my laptop to save. If I do that, I can click on remove, which takes it out of the database list. It does not delete anything off of the SD card. And I can't show you it because I'm using an emulator, it doesn't support that. But let's say I click remove, it'll remove 2000, let's say we're gonna do 2012, that's last year. Click on remove and 2012 uh, then gets removed. But let's say a couple years go by and I go, you know what, I have to do my 2012 stuff again. Well, what you can do is um, you click on add import and type in 2012 and it will then import your 2012 stuff in. All you gotta do is just put the stuff back in where it was before, right onto your card. Uh, onto uh, the 2012 stuff back and it'll go say oh it's there and you can pop, pop it back in for whatever reason if it can't find the database let's say um, it pops up and it says oh I can't find anything it's just default you just go in here and type in click on add import and type in 2013 and it'll find it it's a, a backup just in case something becomes corrupted let's say a particular phone uh, gets shut off while it's saving or whatever and it can't find the group well it doesn't delete it you can just type in 2013, that's what Add Import does. So your database group, we're gonna take a look at that. Now I'm gonna show you through the expenses area um, what these groups are. Now if you go on to uh, your, your SD card, you'll find an, uh, an area called um, if we go MNT, usually now depending on your manufacturer, they'll do these slightly differently. So that's why I, I, I'm hesitant to say exactly what it is, but usually it's MNT and then SD card. And under there, that is your external re device, your external SD card. This is not supported for internal, only external. That way you can take your little SD card, move it over to your laptop and quickly say, uh, move and save and transfer things back and forth. If I allowed the, the option to put it internally, it would just be too much of a mess. So I just decided to go external. So this is always on your external SD card. Now under that, under saved, it gets created. Lojo and Poker Dealers Toolkit. Lojo, a seamless plug, that's another game that I designed, a casino game. Under Poker Dealers Toolkit, you'll see a list of uh, folders here. All settings will have a bunch of different settings in here. Okay, it's only looking for JPEGs right now. So it's only gonna show JPEGs, but all settings will have things for everything. Um, that stuff, such as the, the casinos, things from your settings area. 2012 will have a list of all your folders from 2012 and 2013, well, 2013. These are the folder database groups you set up. So let's say you know, we're working on 2013. Inside 2013 will be all the different folders that are set up. The databases in there will have each of your databases. So income, expenses, string tracker, the databases will be there. Not only in DAT form, but if you convert it over to CSV, which we haven't gotten to yet, that'll all be inside there. So you can save your databases um, right there. If you have um, Kingsoft Office on your Android, you can go in and look at any CSVs right from your Android phone, but they'll be in your databases folder. The ones that start with pick, were taking uh, from the picture area. When you took a picture and you clicked on income, it would save your income record in here. If you clicked on pay stubs, it would save it inside this folder. You clicked on schedules in here. Now, if you clicked on, on uh, pick expenses unassociated, it saves it in here. Once you go to the expenses area and you associate it, it, it renames it and moves into the unassociated. So any pictures that you have that you want to put into the expenses area, you always got to go into this particular folder, the picture expenses unassociated folder. Then the, the system will then look for it in here and you then can associate it here. So you can't just bring it from any folder. It's purposely set up that anywhere that you have 
a unassociated picture, it goes into this folder. Once it associates it, it moves it into here and renames it. If you then unassociate it, it then renames it and moves it back to here. So if on, uh, let's say you have a bunch of pictures you want to bring in from a different program, you move them into this particular folder, the picture expenses unassociated, go to your expenses database and you can associate it right there. So that is a list of the different areas that you find inside of the um, particular database group. So under 2013, you have all of those set up in there. So whenever you create you know, add a different database group, it creates all of those under the whatever year. So that way it's nice and simple. You can take the 2013 group, you know, the folder off and move it somewhere else or 2012, or you can save everything. Uh, and I do have a, a way of email and stuff too, which I'll show you in a bit. When you click on remove, it does not delete that group that I just showed you. It just takes it off of the database right here. It doesn't delete anything off of your, uh, any of the folders that I just showed you. So when you're done, you click on return and you go back out to the main menu. Now the main menu allows you to go to event and transaction ID. By the way, the, the little text here isn't looking like that. These are actually uh, artifacts from the, the emulator that I'm running on Windows here. It doesn't display properly. But we're gonna click on event and transaction ID. Let me show you this. At the top here, it'll say return the main, add new event ID to database, list delete first, previous, next, last. This database is an event ID database. So the idea is here you would, let's say you go to the World Series of Poker, you type in WSOP. Now you get to type in WSOP, you know, 13 for the, the year if you wanted to, or if you did, let's say WPT, and you did di di different WPT events. You can type in, you know, the event, you can type in the casino. And what you notice is the current event ID was WSOP because there's only one during the year. There's one of those, a total of one record. If you click on it again, let's say I wanted to do, let's say the hard rock, I could type in HR, but there's multiple hard rocks. So I might, let's say I work at three different hard rocks. I might then say FT for Fort Lauderdale. Uh, F T and always click done uh, to enter it into it. You click add. Now your current event ID is Hard Rock Fort Lauderdale. It's one of two because it does it alphabetically. And there's two total records in this particular database with the event ID database. If you click on list, you'll see them pop up and this one will be alphabetical. Depending on the database, these will be slightly different. Some of them are by date, but there's no date here, so you don't have to worry about it. So um, it, it goes by whatever I, I thought was important here. What's important is by uh, alphabetical. So let's do WSOP and it selects it. You can also use these just like the other ones and go to the previous record, which is one, the next is two, the last is two, and the first is two. If you don't want to uh, have this, let's say HR Fort Lauderdale, you can just click delete and it'll take it out of the database. So this is the event ID database. Down at the bottom is the current transaction ID, which is two. Whenever you record a transaction ID in expenses area, it'll increment it by one. So right now it's um, Hard Rock Fort Lauderdale 2, but what we want to do is go over to WSOP. You can't change a transaction ID here, just displays it. All right, so uh, now that we've created a WSOP event, the way it works is, if you take a look at it this way, the database group is 2013 for the year. Then I'm going to the WSOP and I'm gonna have transaction one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 for all my expenses. So what you do is on your receipt, you type in WSOP one, WSOP two, that way your receipt matches up with the actual database. So let's go back to expenses one more time. Add expenses and watch what happens. WSOP two. So the first time in, let's say we want to do we'll start with record one. You can only have one WSOP one. So once I record this, let's say I, I save this here. Go back into expenses and you'll see that two pops up because it's assuming now you just did your gas. Now you the next one will be the hotel. And you just type in WSOP1 on your gas receipt, WSOP2 on your 
on your hotel receipt. Now, if you try to go and say, oh, WSOP1, it's going to say oh, there's already one in the database. The reason is you only want to have one per. Now, let's say you wanted to um, rename it to 1,000. You could have the WSOPs starting off at 1,000 and WPTs at 2,000 or whatever. It doesn't matter, just as long as the combo is unique. You can't have an, um, a, a, a different combo. Um, let, me, let me show you this. So we go over here, we're going to move this to for, uh, Hard Rock Fort Lauderdale. Now we're going to go into expenses and I'm going to try to change this to one. And it lets me because there isn't a Hard Rock Fort Lauderdale one. There is a WSOP one, but not a Hard Rock Fort Lauderdale one. So after going to the, to the WSOP, I do the hard, hard Rock, and I start up the transactions at one again. So that way I have transactions one, two, three, four, five. Now you can have it whatever you want. If you wanted to start off the Hard Rock after the WSOPs, let's say there were 100 WSOPs, and then you do the Hard Rock, you can start the Hard Rock at 101. Whatever you want is fine, it's just you only can have one event ID, transaction ID combo. That's the only thing that is, is, is mandated that you, can, uh, that you can do is one combo like that. So that is the event ID, transaction ID. And every time you save one of the records and expenses, it'll increment at one so that next time you pop in, it'll come up one higher then you can change it to whatever you want. It just assumes that the next time you come in, it's going to be one higher, transaction two. So that's the event ID, transaction ID combo. Now let's look at convert an email. By the way, these buttons don't look like that. I keep saying on every single video in case you missed a video. Uh, that's just a, an artifact of the emulator not displaying this properly. The first thing that you'll notice is Depending on what you're doing, uh, if you have any expenses in the database, it'll allow you to uh, do certain things. You click on that and you see it pop over like this. What this means is when it's in a form like a, a, a rectangle card, you click on it, you can't do anything. But if it's got an oval like this, you can click on it and it'll do something. It means it's enabled. So in this particular database of 2013 one, if you click on convert, the only one we have one record in the expenses right now. You will notice that up here, you have invalid email at nowhere.com. That's just the bogus email address. In the settings area, if you went to settings and then you go into the second page, you'll notice right here you have the email. So you type in an email address on the settings area for the casino. Then you come back to convert an email and it'll pop up right here. So that way it'll, it'll take this email address and send the databases to you. Now there's three different databases, string tracker, income, and expenses. Now this right here is defaulted. There's no database. That's why it's 999 um, This particular record was record one of the expense database. So there's a total of one record in expense databases. And the last time I clicked on this button to convert it was March 31st. If you go back to the expense database, you'll notice that there's one record here. So it tells you the number of records in the convert and email area here and when it was last converted over. The thing about the conversion is this. When you have a database, it comes up in a DAT form on your um, SD card. But you can't necessarily read it. You click on, let's say, Expenses Database here, it'll convert it from DAT to CSV, and then it'll allow you to email it out. CSV is something that Microsoft Excel can read. It can't read the DAT, but it can read the CSV. So you have to convert it over to CSV. If you leave it right now on your device, it'll be CSV in your database folder area as a CSV, and you can open it up using Kingsoft Office, which is an Android program, right on your Android device. If you click on email, it'll email it to whatever this email address is up here. That's one way of backing up the database. Let's say you had a whole bunch of expense databases. Well, you can email it to yourself so that, let's say your phone gets lost. Well, you now have your database backed up. Or let's say you want to view it on your laptop with Windows using Microsoft Excel. Well, it'll uh, be able to uh, read a CSV file. So that's what that is about. 
So you click on this and your email client or whatever email client you're using, whether it's Yahoo or Gmail or whatever, it'll pop up or give you an option of which one you want to use. It'll pop up and then this information will all be imported and you just sit, click on send and it'll send it right out. Convert email all, what that does is it'll convert all of these if you if you you have to have at least one record each in these databases to do this uh, so let's just go ahead and uh, for the year 2013 we're gonna make a, a dummy um, income record we're gonna save one and we're gonna go do this string track and we'll save one as well so now that we have uh, one in each of the 2013s so we go back to convert an email you'll see number of records one one and one now we can click on convert string tracker database from dat over to csv and when it's done it'll change so you can you could do these individually expense income or string tracker let's say you only want the expense database you can send that out convert it over send it out or if you only want income you can send it over let's say you're not doing expenses at all well you don't need all of this information if you only do an income you only need one database you just convert it over then send it out what convert email all does it will convert all three of these at the same time from CSV or from DAT over to CSV and it'll email it out as one email. So if you want all of your information backed up, you can do that. It also include other things as well. Uh, if you take a look at the actual email, it'll include all the other da databases. Now, if you remember, we have databases such as category under the expenses, which is gas and hair and food, all that. It'll, it'll throw in other databases as well. All you got to do is uh, open up Microsoft Excel and click on the CSV file. So it'll say income.csv or string tracker CSV or whatever um, database, and you can open it up and run it in Excel. There will be included an XML file if you do the convert all. If you double click on that and you have Excel, it'll import all three of these databases and possibly other ones as well and bring them into one particular database or one particular spreadsheet. And each of these will be a different worksheet. So instead of having three separate uh, Microsoft Excel uh, programs run it, it'll have one program, each of these will be imported in. The only thing is, some people have it set up so that you can't do that and because you can, uh, uh, it allows you to run uh, like little programs and do things on your computer. So you might have to set it up to take out your Excel um, macros um, because there could be viruses attached. There is information, uh, a text file included, explains all that, how to do all that information. It's all in there. It's just too much to get into in this video. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then don't. Just do, um, you can still convert it over, but you just have to uh, take and open up one at a time. But the XML, XML file will allow you, if you double click on it when it, on your desktop, it'll open up in Excel. And then from there, it'll import everything into one uh, spreadsheet for easy viewing um, so if you don't trust me then don't do it uh, whatever so that is um, how you convert over here you convert it over from dat to to csv and you click on this to send it out to this particular email address and the reason why i have date last converted is so when you can look at it and say oh it's been a week or it's been a month or whatever you know depending on how much you work you might want to do this if you work you might want to do it weekly if you don't do any expenses, you never do it at all. If you do a string tracker, you know, when you work, you might do that weekly or daily or whatever. Whatever, you know, is comfortable for you. But at least what I do is I have a, a, a folder on uh, my Yahoo uh, email. And whenever I, uh, I just do convert email all every once in a while, uh, maybe once a week. And it, I just put it right into my Yahoo um, um folder on my um when i go to my yahoo mail i just put it in a folder so i have all my databases saved there and i can just delete off old ones or you can then from there you then transfer it right onto your desktop and you can open them up there you click return to main you come back to the uh, main menu so that all the information is just like it was before now if you got this far good for you um, it was very very long uh, uh, videos explaining all this but I wanted to go through each of the areas so you know you can watch these at your leisure to see the different areas um, and once again if you click on like your menu key and, and you like this you go down to the get pro version it'll take you to if you, if you downloaded this through Google 
And you'll know by, if you click on the title screen, G stands for Google, A stands for Amazon. This is version 1.0 Google. This is the free version. If you click on menu, it'll take you to the Google App Store so that you can take a look at and see if you want to download uh, the pro version. If it's A, it's the Amazon version. It'll take you to Amazon's uh, Android App Store. So if you want to maybe possibly support me and help me out a little bit, you know, the, mo the more that I sell, the more likely I'm going to do more of these for the poker dealers uh, as well. And another shameless plug, BiffsGamingVideos.com. This will take you there. Or you can go to the YouTube channel. It's YouTube.com slash BiffsGamingVideos. Uh, Lojo is uh, another game I designed. It's a casino game. It's kind of like a reverse blackjack. It's a real casino game that I got uh, stats done on everything. And uh, it, there you've got instructions as well. If you go to my YouTube channel, well, all these videos will be on the YouTube channel, which is um, www.youtube.com forward slash USER forward slash Slifker Games, which is S L I F K E R G A M E S. All of these videos for this and Lojo and anything else that I've designed would be there uh, so that you can then watch them uh, there or through here. Uh, uh, and if uh, one of these is the video instructions, let's say Biff's Game and Videos, then it won't be here. It'll be in video instructions. So one of these will probably be video instructions. Uh, so that is uh, Poker Dealer's Toolkit. If you like it, go to the Pro version and upgrade.